Welcome back. This week, Plant Daddy has something to watch out for in the yard and garden. They are called jumping worms, and this invasive species is a threat to our landscapes. Jumping worms are best identified for their very active snake-like moves and even secreting yellow mucus when they're agitated, or you can identify them from their dark bodies with a distinctive cream-colored band. Regular earthworms are more pink in color. Your first signs might actually be the distinctive granular soil these worms leave behind that look like coffee grounds or ground meat. Agriculture departments in several East Coast and Midwestern states say the problem with the jumping worms is they eat organic matter so quickly it doesn't break down the, and nourish the soil. They also live a little closer to the soil surface, leaving any nutrients they do create out of reach for most root systems, making it harder for native plants and wildlife to survive. If you find them, best advice, hand pick them, put them in a plastic bag in the hot sun for about a half hour and then throw them away into the garbage, not your compost bin. Also, also, to keep our problem from getting even worse, avoid buying jumping worms for bait or composting purposes as well. From the viewer mailbag, many questions about what's called blossom end rot and what you can do about it. It is an ugly condition that shows up on the emerging fruits of tomatoes, eggplants, peppers, and even some squash that's a symptom of calcium deficiency in the plant. The calcium deficiency comes from either soil that is lacking or uneven watering, which doesn't let the plant absorb calcium. Now you can't stop it on the fruit once you've got it, so spotting it early and removing the affected veggies helps the plant not to waste any more energy on them. There's treatments for the plant that can be applied once you find blossom end rot for a quick shot of calcium. You have to apply it to the base of the plant, and it's also not a bad idea to do it as well after a heavy rain, but more extension offices say it's even easier to just prevent it altogether. That means adding things like a lot of crushed eggshells or even a half to a whole cup of bone meal to the soil when you're planting your nightshades, peppers, or squash can keep uh, that symptom from happening to your veggies. I've seen it even on Pinterest, as you can see here, starting your tomato seedlings in cleaned out eggshells. This is from a Homestead Lifestyle account. It's a clever idea, although I have not tried it out myself. Drip irrigation systems or just the covering of the soil with an inch or two of mulch or straw around those plants can keep the soil from drying out between waterings and therefore possibly preventing blossom and rot too. And finally, one of the first flowers in many yards might not be the enemy you think it is. We're talking about dandelions. Botanists consider the dandelion an herb and not a weed. Most of the plant, believe it or not, completely edible. Even the flowers, although the stems are quite bitter tasting. Dandelions loaded with antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, and fiber, and can reduce inflammation among a host of other health benefits. Young dandelion leaves are already in some of the mixed salad green bags sold in grocery stores. If you don't have your lawn treated with chemicals and don't have pet waste to worry about, you could harvest the ones in your yard while you weed. One thing to note, it's important to know the difference between a true dandelion with just one flower for stem compared to the more spindly looking plant, which has multiple yellow flowers per stem. Those are called cat's ear or false dandelion, and that plant is not considered edible. If you've got any gardening questions, especially if it has to do with how the weather can affect plants, send me an email here at the station, tjoyce at wgntv.com. In the meantime, I've got the gardening forecast right up after the break.